Nuestra cita de hoy es en Napa, California. Visitamos nuevamente la colección Di Rosa para conocer su colección permanente. Vengan conmigo. Catherine, I would like to ask you about the spirit of the collection, how this started from a dream and how it turned into a public project. Sure. Well, our founder, Renee de Rosa, came to San Francisco in the 50s and was really struck by the bohemia, the beat spirit that was going on at the time. And he was mingling with the poets, but he very quickly met the artists and became really, really excited about the energy that was very different from the energy that he had come from on the East Coast. And after the war, there was a great period of exuberance. So he tried very hard to be an artist himself and a writer and realized that uh, he didn't have it in him. So he began to support other artists and think about how he could help support them. I don't think he started out to be a collector. He started out just helping artists. So DeRosa Collection is actually known, I think, for having an incredible sense of place. It's completely centered on the art of Northern California. It's very much of the period of the last 50 years of the 20th century and continues on today. But it is really a snapshot of the artists, the teachers, the students, the art schools, and the movements that were here at the time because he collected and supported everybody, not just the blue chip artists, but their friends and their students and their wives and everyone else in the circle. So it offers a very wide ranging and I think very um, unusual portrait, really more from an artist's or a passionate eye of the movements and social movements, I would also say, of the latter half of the 20th century in Northern California. Look, this is our largest gallery. Uh, the main gallery has been here. I uh, was built in 1997 and to house the collection. It's the, it built in the same style as the gatehouse. And the original architect was asked to do things that looked like they might be on a farm. They're not very different from some of the winery structures in the valley. The strongest part of the collection is this area around the activity in the 60s with um, the Davis Funk School and some of the artists that were studying together. And it just so happened that three, the artists we call the Holy Three in the collection, I became close friends of Renee all the way to this death. Um, Bob Hudson, Bill Allen, it's a collaboration between Bill Allen and uh, William Wiley. And for me, one of the things that's really extraordinary about the collection is this is artwork by artists of their time that were speaking about their lives, where they grew up, their place, the social issues that they were involved with. And they were really trying to make work about what it was like to be alive in that place and in that time. So we have this crazy piece by the artist uh, Roy DeForest called Camp of the Landscape Painters. And it, very much the landscape of the Pacific Northwest. Um, DeForest is someone who is known for his dog paintings. Um, he identified with the dog. But he also was very, very aware of you know, Beowulf and some of the older mythology of older stories from Western civilization. And he had codes sort of embedded in these very lighthearted, fun paintings with a sense of humor, which is very typical also of the West Coast, is a lot of very deep sort of archetypal material 
about people interacting with the land. Um, you have this strange horned half human figure here. Um, so the landscape painters, but you've got this funny Picasso Cuba, yeah. Cubist figure here in the middle of all this wackiness with the dogs and the trees. And so, you know, they've got the paintbrush sort of hanging almost like a trophy on the end of the little cart. Um, the dogs are the ones that seem to see it all. They understand everything that's going on. The humans, maybe not so much. has a lot of work of social and political content that's very explicit about particular issues or particular sort of timely events. And the piece we're standing in front of um, by Enrique Chagoya is called When Paradise Arrived. And you can see uh, the little figure here um, being menaced by this large sort of Mickey Mouse glove. And on the glove it says English only. So it's clearly, this piece is very much about immigration it's very much about people coming to the U.S. She's, of course, you know, displaying the hand gesture for education, um, sort of a, a very long thing with, with uh, you know, the heart. Um, so there's a lot of things that Chagoya does very simply using sort of very direct drawing images, but he packs a lot of content in. I think speaks to the fragility of the piece and uh, what's in the balance. Very wonderful, wonderful piece. This piece by Paul Koss is in a tunnel that was designed as a collaboration between the collector and the artist. And there is a dedication on a wall by, from the artist thanking his patron for giving him the opportunity to do this. So we're standing in a long tunnel that has the beams here for the number 12, like the 12 stations of the cross, if you will, dripping water to resemble what you might find in very old buildings someplace in Europe. And the piece that we're, actually, that we're looking at is called Chat Bleu. It's a video piece. It's 12 hours of daylight passing behind the blue window at Chartres Cathedral in France that has been shortened to 12 minutes and then remastered through video so that you have the opportunity to sit and experience the passage of time. so much for this visit it has been an amazing day mm -hmm. and I would like uh, for us to finish to to sum up this uh, this vision this project mm -hmm. how will will be the last message the statement that we want to make with focusing on the art of this region is the importance in investing and supporting the artists of your time and place because they not only make for more vibrant communities around us, but they leave the record for those who come after us in history. And we feel that the riches of the landscape and the art provides a context for understanding our times and who we are now that is really unique and rare. This is beautiful. This has been a treasure for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will see you next time we come to Napa.